Here we're going to be looking at a sales type lease and we're going to be looking at it from the lessor's perspective here. Now a sales type lease that's similar to a direct financing lease except that it involves a gross profit or loss by the lessor here, the manufacturer, the dealer. So the first thing we'll look at here is our amortization schedule here. We have our payments amount here and then we have some expenses here. Those are executory costs, maintenance costs, so forth. And then we have a financing cost component. In this case, it would be the interest receivable by the lessor. And then we have a principal um, or principal amount here. That's a lease receivable recovery amount here by the lessor. So the first thing we want to look at here is this minimum lease payments. And that would be based on the fact here that you have this payment amount here at 22250 and you have to subtract out these uh, executory costs here of $2,000 and that gives us a uh, $20,250 amount here and that's the minimum lease payment that we'd be working with here. And then the next thing here we have to look at is we've got is this residual value. In this case it's $4,500 and that's the estimated fair value that this leased asset would be worth at the end of the lease term here. And then the other thing here is this capitalized amount here on the lease. And oh, we have an amount here of $88,000. And that's uh, based on the fact here that we take and discount the present value of those minimum lease payments of $20,250. And they're at the beginning of the uh, lease uh, term each year here and they're discounted back here at nine and a half percent and then discounting those that present value of those minimum lease payments they're worth eighty five thousand one hundred and forty dollars and then we have to discount this residual value back here of forty five hundred dollars again for five years nine and a half percent and it's worth twenty eight hundred and fifty eight dollars so you just add this uh, present value of this minimum lease payments of eighty five thousand one forty plus the twenty eight fifty eight here the residual value discounted back and that gives us our capitalized lease amount here. So the next thing we have to do here is we're going to look at how to calculate the gross profit on this sales type lease. And uh, there's two different items here that we have to look at. We have to look at the guaranteed residual value versus the unguaranteed residual value. So just looking at working out through our guaranteed residual value here to determine the gross profit. We have our capitalized amount here of the lease and that's a lease receivable here. That was 88000 that we had determined up here. Now we have to take this minimum lease payment that was the eighty five thousand one hundred and forty dollars that we discounted back plus we add to it the uh, uh, discount here on the uh, residual amount here of twenty eight hundred and fifty eight dollars you add those two together here and you're going to get the sales price of the asset here. That's going to be the sales price of the asset. 85140 plus the 2858 gives us a sales price here of $88,000. Now we're given the uh, equipment cost or the cost of goods sold in this case and it was the uh, given amount here of $73,000. So to determine our gross profit, we take the sales price here of the asset that we calculated, 88000 less the cost of goods sold, the $73,000, gives us a gross profit here of $15,000. Now that's based on the gar a guaranteed residual value. Now let's look at how we calculate this gross profit here with an unguaranteed residual value. Here we have, we start with this lease receivable, the capitalized amount here of $88,000. Now we subtract out the present value of that uh, residual amount here of $4,500, which uh, the present value here is $2,858. Subtract that here from the lease receivable $88,000, and we get the sales price of the asset to be $85,140. Now that equals the discounted amount here of the uh, minimum lease payments of $20,250 that we discounted back here for five years at 9.5%. So now we have this inquis we have the sales price here of eighty five thousand one hundred forty dollars, and then we have the, the given amount here for the equipment cost, or that was the cost of goods sold that we had here uh, from the guaranteed residual value, but. In this case, we look at it as the equipment cost here. So we would take that equipment cost here and we'd subtract out the minimum or uh, the discounted amount of that residual amount here of 2858 and we get 
a cost of goods sold here of $70,142. So here we took the equipment cost that we were given of $73,000 and we subtracted out the present value of that residual amount. That gave us the cost of goods sold here is $70,142. Now we take the sales price of the asset that we calculated up here above here, the sales price here of $85,140. We have that showing down here as the sales price of the asset at $85,140. Now we subtract out the cost of goods sold that we calculated here of $70,142. That gives us a gross profit here of $15,000. So if we compare our guaranteed residual value gross profit with the unguaranteed residual value gross profit, you can see the, the same here of $15,000. So what the, the only difference that we have here is because we were we were had to subtract using the unguaranteed residual value um, we to de, using that here we had to subtract that um, present value of that residual value here and several in subtracted that here from the lease receivable to determine our sales price and we also subtracted that here uh, from the equipment cost here to determine the cost of goods sold and then again uh, we here we took the uh, sales price that we calculated there and then we subtracted out the cost of goods sold to determine the gross profit. So the only difference here between this guaranteed res using the guaranteed residual value versus the unguaranteed residual value is the difference between the sales revenue or the price here and the cost of goods sold. So here we had our sales price of $85,140 versus our sales price over here, the guaranteed residual value of $88,000. And then our cost of goods sold here for the unguaranteed with the unguaranteed residual value was seventy thousand one hundred forty two versus the um, for the guaranteed residual value here at seventy three thousand dollars. Now let's look at recording this sales type lease at its inception here and we're going to be looking at it from the lessor's perspective and we're going to be looking at both a, how we'd record a, it with a guaranteed residual value versus an unguaranteed residual value. So in both cases here we'd record a lease receivable here and that would be for the uh, debit that for the capitalized amount here of $88,000 and then these amounts here are the lease recovery that would be recognized each year. But the point here in the sales type lease is we would record it an inventory item here for this leased asset and we'd credit that or reduce that in this case by $73,000 and that's the cost of the leased asset. Now this lease receivable and this inventory amount they would be recorded the same here for both the guaranteed and the unguaranteed residual value. So let's look here at the guaranteed residual value. We'd record a sales revenue or credit that for $88,000. That was the capitalized amount of the lease here and that included that residual value here here of $2,858. And then our cost of goods sold, we would debit that here for $73,000. And that was simply the cost of the asset here. So our gross profit was $88,000 here. The sales revenue less the cost of goods sold here of $73,000 gives us a gross profit here of $15,000. Now looking at the ungu unguaranteed residual value, we take our sales revenue and we credit that here for $85,100. $142. So what we've done here is we've deducted the present value of that unguaranteed residual value here of $2,858. We deducted that from the capitalized amount of $88,000. And then our cost of goods sold here, we would debit that here for $70,142. That was the uh, deduct the present value of the un, uh, that uh, unguaranteed residual value or uh, residual value of $2,858 from the uh, cost, uh, our cost inventory cost here on that asset. So that would be for $70,142. So just taking the sales revenue of $85,142 less the cost of goods sold here of $70,142, we still have a gross profit here of $15,000. So just to review here, in both cases for the guaranteed and the unguaranteed residual value, we'd record this lease receivable here, debit that for $88,000, and then we would credit or reduce an inventory account here for $73,000 dollars for that cost of the asset leased. 
Okay, now let's look at how we record the receipt of these lease payments here, and that's going to be based on that amortization schedule that we had developed, and it's going to be from the lessor's perspective here. So first we'd have to record that cash payment here of $22,250, and then we have to subtract out those executory costs or those maintenance costs from that cash payment here of $2,000 per year here. And then we have our lease receivable debited here for $88,000, a capitalized amount here. And then we have the lease recovery for each year here for that uh, uh, lease here. And then we would, and of course, we have our inventory account here that would have been credited or reduced here for the or the cost of that leased asset here. And then we would have to record the interest receivable here for each year here. And we got a debited amount that we moved over here as a credited amount because the interest in this example was accrued at the end of the year and received at the beginning of the next year with the lease payment here. And then we have to go over here and look at our sales revenue. We'd credit that for the $88,000, the capitalized amount. And again, this was based on a guaranteed residual uh, in this case here. And then our cost of goods sold, we would have debited that here for $73,000. And then we also have this interest revenue we would credit that we would have received here for each of those lease payments. And then again, the lesser in this case does not record any depreciation. But what I want to go over here and look at is how we'd handle this residual value here at the end of the lease here. We've got a residual value we have to account for for this cash amount, the lease receivable, the interest receivable, and also the inventory here. And we're going to look at that here. So let's assume that the fair value of the residual at the end of the lease was $2,500. We originally estimated it to be $4,500, but at the end of the lease here, uh, five years later, we determined it was actually worth $2,500. So to record the residual value at the end of the lease, we would do it in this way. We'd debit our inventory account or increase our inventory account here for $2,500. That's the fair value of the asset here at the end of the lease. And then we would uh, debit our cash account here, increase that for $2,000. And then we would uh, credit or reduce our lease receivable here by $4,500. Now, if we look at it from both the guaranteed and an, and an unguaranteed residual value, we're going to have the same entries here for our inventory, our cash, and our lease receivable. So uh, it's based on the fact here that the leaser assumes that the residual will be recovered even if it's unguaranteed by the lessee here. But the point is here, we're gonna, the amount here uh, for that... Uh, least receivable that we in the initial amount here that we estimated at forty five hundred dollars we're going to assume that we're going to get that back here and it's going to be divided between the property and the cash any uh, property and cash will be returned here by the lessee to the lessor here so in this case um, had the inventory account or the uh, fair value been three thousand dollars here then our we would of a debit or increase our inventory account here for three thousand, and then our cash account would have been reduced by that uh, the balancing amount here between the three thousand dollar inventory and the lease receivable of forty five hundred would give us a cash amount here of fifteen hundred dollars. So that's how we'd account for our. Uh, res uh, re residual here at the end of the lease for our lease receivable here, our cash account, and our inventory account.